All right, so as Sue said, I'm going to talk about the invisible analyst today. And it's um, all about, well, we will see <laughs> what it is all about, but really this is something that I've suffered a lot from my career, being in the background, doing some work and never being seen. And I've managed to get out of my corner and I felt like I would share with you today how that happened and share some tips on how, if you're in this situation, how you could get out of it, but also how you can support others who could potentially be in this situation and elevate other people. Um, so how I see it is, and this is working, yes, slides are moving. <laughs> how I see it is we grew up with these very set beliefs on how progressions happen, so how we get recognized for our work. And growing up, we just believe that if we work hard, if we do what we're asked to, to, to do, yeah, um, we're going to get the recognition we want and we take that with us in our career. So very often what happens is we start working and we think I'm going to do a great job. We put the hours in, we produce some very great quality work. Um, I, I have to say that no one had anything to do about the quality of my work, yet I could see other people being promoted before me who their work wasn't the same quality. And I was just wondering why. And it got to a point where I felt like maybe I shouldn't work in the space. I looked into different careers. I felt, okay, maybe um, I shouldn't be working in data. Maybe I should try to do something else. And I did try to do, <laughs> to do something else for a while. Thankfully, I found that the problem was not about the work I was doing. It wasn't about the quality of my work. It was mainly about the fact that I wasn't going the way I should go to have recognition, to have career progression, but also to make people notice me in the workplace. Um, so, sorry, it's a bit noisy in the background. I had to change room, <laughs> uh, but hopefully there won't be too many cars around. Um, right, so I will just start quickly by introducing myself. So as Sue said, I'm Karen and I'm an analytics manager at a company called Cardlytics. And what we do at Cardlytics is we act as a, a platform that enables advertisers to push cashback offers on bank digital channels. Um, and there I manage a small team of analysts and I support everything that is, we call them publishers. So it's the bank and open banking, banking platforms where we push our cashback offers to. So I help them understand the value of our program, understand their customers better. So that's a lot of customer analytics, a lot of profiling, a bit of modeling from time to time. Um, and on the side, I also host and produce the Women in Data podcast which really aims at bringing more transparency on career in data and support data professional in their career development. So this is I'm super passionate about because that's something I struggled with in the past uh, and still struggle with actually. Um, and it's all for me, uh, sharing knowledge is extremely important. So on the podcast, I interview some amazing women like Sue uh, to share their knowledge, share their experience, what they've learned from their experience in the field so that others can learn from them. And lastly, which is giving me a bit of credibility on why I'm talking here today, I am a reformed invisible analyst. Um, all right, so today, three main points we're going to look into is how being an invisible analyst impacts your career. Then we're going to look into how to assess your situation in order to turn things around. I do believe that self-reflection uh, is very important when it comes to career development. And lastly, we are going to look into actions that you can take to help your visibility. Now, I am fully aware that we are in a virtual room full of women uh, and working in data, which means that there is probably a big bias on being introvert and being shy. Um, this is definitely me, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to in include here some tips uh, for introverts. So people who don't feel comfortable with openly speaking or putting themselves out there so that hopefully everybody can take something out of this. 
Um, and if you're an introvert and you feel very uncomfortable increasing your visibility, feel free to reach out at any time because this was definitely my situation. All right, so let's look into how being an invisible analyst impacts your career. I, I see it as a very vicious cycle. So if you remember earlier when I was doing my introduction, I was saying that I went to the extent of thinking I should change career. And that's because I was very invisible and my work wasn't recognized. Uh, and that made me feel very self-conscious about the work I was producing, uh, whether I had the space in the, um, in the field and really about my confidence took a really big hit. So there, there is some very big negative um, effects when you are invisible. So as I said, I call it the invisibility curse. So that's really the vicious cycle. So your contribution not being recognized because you are not visible, then what happens from that is that you feel frustrated. You feel that your work is not appreciated. All the efforts you're putting in is not appreciated. And you feel like you are not good enough sometimes. So you might not feel all of that, but there is definitely going to be a bit of that. Then the consequence of that is that you don't put yourself forward for big projects. So you're going to stay on smaller projects. That means that you are less likely to be visible because you're only working on small things that might not impact the organization as much. So because you don't put yourself forward, you're not getting bigger pieces of work or more interesting pieces of work. So the, the value you put to your work is not going to be that exciting because you're going to work on small projects that do not challenge you, that don't bring anything to the organization. And I mean, let's face it, if you're not putting yourself forward for bigger projects, it's very unlikely that someone else will um, put yourself on them, unless you, are, you have an amazing manager. Uh, <laughs> but it has to start from you. So if you don't put yourself forward, it's very unlikely that you will get the big project and then we're back to your contribution is not being recognized. Um, so keep an eye on that. I've got uh, on my next slide, I'm not sure if you can annotate on the screen, but if not, if you could put on the chat, how comfortable you feel about self-promotion. So, I guess if you cannot annotate, if you put in the chat from one to 10, one being that you are not comfortable at all and uh, or the other way around. Uh, one being you feel comfortable, 10 being you don't feel comfortable at all. I just want to know how uncomfortable you feel. Um, are we seeing things? Uncomfortable, thank you. Anyone else wants to share in the chat? So 10 is, I feel very, yeah, maybe Sarah got it right. <laughs> if I want to write it, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Depends on the audience. This is really true. So it's good to see that we have, um, we have a mix and some people are feeling quite comfortable. Uh, I, I have to agree with Joe. There are moments where I feel super comfortable um, putting myself out there and then doing some self-promotion. And then there are moments that where I just feel like hiding under the table. Um, it's crazy. Uh, all right, so now we know why it's important to get out of that situation if you are in there or how why it's important to support people who are feeling invisible and let's look let's look into how to turn things around so as i said for me everything that touches career development or personal development starts with um self-reflection so and that's probably because I'm an introvert. I do like to spend time in my head. Uh, I feel like it's a very fun space to be, and I just love it. Um, so when you reflect on your situation, think about what does what contributes to you not being visible. So why are you in this situation? Is it because you're feeling like you're not good enough, you might have an imposter syndrome, is it because you need some extra training? Is it because of the people that surround you? This can happen a lot. Is it because of your organization? They're not letting you the space to, 
to be yourself. Uh, and in that case, you might want to change organization, but everything else, there is something we can do about it. Um, and you can take ownership of that and ask for the support you, you need. The second thing that I, do, I did feel quite impactful was to think about my strength. So think about where are your strongest points and how can you apply that in your role? Are you actually playing by your strength at work? An example of that was, I was trying to be extremely technical um, in my work. And while my background is in data science, I can code, I know predictive analytics, all that stuff. This is not my strongest point. So my strongest point is in developing people, building relationship, building strategy and things like that. So once I understood that, a lot of things changed for me because I was playing not on my strength, but on the area where I felt like I ever needed to develop all the time. Um, and then think about what you've achieved so far. Uh, I like to keep a list of achievements, which sounds a bit weird but it does help especially when you have to do annual reviews after you do have these small reminders that are useful and then lastly uh, think about what it takes in your organization to get recognized or promoted so depending on what you're after it could be just having the recognition uh, having your work being told, yes, this is great, uh, being put on bigger projects, or it could be that you're after a promotion. So look into other people around you who have had what, you, what you're aiming for, what did they have to do to get there? And what is the management or the leadership saying? Um, so as I said, focusing on your strength is something that is very important. And I do believe that this is the best advice I was ever given. So it was Victoria Pike, who is working at St. Risna. At the time she was working at Mencap, she was head of data at Mencap. And one day I was having breakfast with her and she said, Karen, you focus too much on your weaknesses. You should focus on your strengths. And just that sentence changed everything for me. So this, this was basically my um, wake up call to put myself out there, focus on my strengths and actually do my work and understand that data is where I want to be. I'm just trying to be in the shoes of someone else in data. Um, all right, now, <laughs> once you've done your reflection, I know I've been talking about being an introvert and everything, and now I'm going to tell you that you have to put yourself out there. You need to promote yourself. And there, are, there is actually a survey. Um, I think I found it in the self-promotion gap that was saying that 70% of women felt like they would prefer to undermine their work than self-promote, which is, I mean, 70% of the women um, surveyed obviously but that was quite a big number I mean 70% is quite high uh, and we need to get out of that we cannot keep um, bringing ourselves down so undervaluing our work as, ourselves so let's look into how we can increase our visibility and it doesn't have to be bragging so when when I started talking thinking about how can I increase my visibility I was under the impression that I had to do hey look at all these cool stuff I've been doing I'm the best and you have to recognize me for that and I was thinking no this is not me I can't be doing that um I'm not big on the fake it till you make it either so I had to find a way that was working for me um so Three things we are going to look into to increase your visibility or support others who are trying to increase their visibility is making yourself known internally, super important. Contribute to work outside of your day to day and also surround yourself with the right people, which I do believe is probably the most impactful part of these three. Uh, so how to make yourself known internally. Three things I tried, and while these are the ones that I found the most impactful, I tried a lot of things <laughs> over the last four years. These are the ones I found were the most impactful. So presenting at all staff meetings, um, and depending on the size of your organization, it might be easy or hard, uh, but you could put yourself forward for, to speak at meetings where there are going to be senior leaders or people outside of your team so that 
you can show your face. And things you could present, that could be a piece of work that you've done. It could be, sometimes managers don't want to present things. So maybe your manager doesn't want to present something and you're thinking, okay, maybe I could talk about that um, at the old staff meeting, or it could just be co-hosting. So if you don't feel comfortable yet talking about a big piece of work, if this is something that makes you sweat, <laughs> um, you can just co-host the meeting. So that will be helping the person who is hosting put the deck together, or maybe just presenting the, introducing the speakers and all these things like that. And slowly, little by little, you can get there and start speaking even more. Second thing that is quite fun, especially if you work in data, is company-wide workshops. So this is something that adds a lot of value to the company and to your profile. Um, people do like to learn, and especially when it's something that's going to support them in their role. So things as simple as Excel workshops, you will be surprised how much training people need if they don't work in data. So you could just do a pivot table training, a VLOOKUP training, something very simple that can add a lot of value to others. Um, once I did the JavaScript training, which was, <laughs> that was an interesting experience. I cannot code Java. I do not know HTML. And I was like, okay, what kind of things I can do that's going to get people excited? And we just created an app. I can't even remember what it was doing. And I was learning as I was doing that actually. And they all had fun. The feedback was great. We did three sessions of one hour. We all created a, a web page that was doing something and everybody loved it. And I did learn a bit of JavaScript while doing that and a bit of HTML. So that was great. Um, and the last one, especially if you are more on the introvert side, creating a newsletter for your team. Why I find the newsletter valuable is that First, it doesn't feel like you are bragging uh, and you're just talking about your work. You are elevating your team. Um, so it's everybody in the team gets a space in the newsletter. You own the newsletter. So your name is out there, but you're not talking about just the great work you're doing. You're talking about the great work that everyone is doing. And that means it benefits everybody in the team. I found that to be very effective um, at Cardlytics. So it helps us with data literacy. We put some tips in there, uh, Excel shortcuts that are <laughs> very um, fun to look for, but also people love them. We talk about behind the scenes. So projects we've done that people would have not seen how much work we've put in there so that they are more aware of what we've been working on. Um, we talk about team celebration, so something that someone has done, silly things that we've done, someone getting locked on the balcony, um, just so that they see the face of the team and then you can also showcase great work that's been happening. But I want to say that the thing that helped me the most in my visibility was producing a podcast. And I know I've been talking about writing your profile internally, but writing my profile externally meant that everybody in the leadership team could see what I was doing outside of work. And I found little by little that they're all listening to my podcast. And I was like, okay. So I get the most random person coming to me being like, oh my God, Karen, this episode was great. Mm, okay, so you are listening to that. Um, so that's been extremely helpful and producing a podcast is not for everyone. Uh, so I am fully aware of that, but something like blogging um, or just attending events and posting about it on social media, things like that, that does increase your profile quite a lot. And it takes a lot of time, but my belief is that if you want to progress and increase your visibility, you're going to have to put some work behind it anyways. So just be aware of how much work you want to put. Creating a podcast episode takes me about 13 hours. Um, now I have a team that helps out, so that reduces the amount of time I have to put in there. But the initial investment was massive. So just be aware of that. Uh, now, contribute outside of your day-to-day. -day. So 
this came from the fact that I was hiding behind my screen and I was doing my stuff, but no one knew what I was doing uh, and no one knew who I was. And I felt like by getting involved in a wider project meant that I could collaborate with other teams. So not just my data analytics team, not just with the data engineering team, I would speak with senior stakeholders, innovation team, account managers, um, IT professionals as well, and even uh, outside of the UK, so with the broader Carlytics team. So that was quite great in terms of visibility. Um, supporting your manager's goals. I mean, there is nothing that's going to get you promoted faster than making your manager's life easier. So find out what matters to your manager and help them with their goals. So help them reach their goals. Um, that's quite, that's uh, very, <laughs> very empowering. And the last one is joining a committee. That means that you can showcase skills that are outside of your core skills. So, so outside of the core skills related to your work uh, and show people that you can do other things, speak with other people very openly. So I know I joined the Women of Carlytics Committee and that means that I've got very easy access to our CEO who is based in the US and that would have never happened outside of that committee. Um, so I spoke on the podcast with Natalia Laskaya, and she was talking about building data science team from scratch, especially in the startup space. And what she said, so a sentence she said that really resonated with me was that the biggest contribution of a data scientist is not in building algorithms or writing codes or all these kind of things. It is in speaking with stakeholders, understanding the problem they face and provide them with solutions to help them solve these problems. You cannot do that if you sit behind your laptop and you spend your whole day coding. So this is why I was saying, try to contribute outside of your day to day, go speak with people. And that's going to not only raise your profile, but it's going to help you have a bigger impact on the company. And lastly, it was around surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, I, as I said, I believe this is the most important part of the things because everything I've done, I've said, and everything I've done, actually, I wouldn't have been able to do that without having people supporting me, without having people guiding me. So I mentioned Vicky Pike before saying, you focus too much on your weaknesses, you should focus on your strengths. Vicky was my mentor at the time. And although it wasn't a formal mentoring situation, we were just having a coffee chat, she was my mentor, she was mentoring me. And had she not been there to say that, I don't think I would have been here today. Maybe I would have been here at some point, but definitely not. At um, My transformation wouldn't have happened as fast as it did. And if I can give an advice on finding mentors, I know a lot of people ask, how can I find a mentor? It feels very awkward to go to someone and say, hey, do you want to be my mentor? It's a, it feels a bit like being, hey, do you want to be my friend? Um, and although I've done that recently, it worked quite well. <laughs> um, and we do feel like people are very busy. They don't have time. So they are always going to reject us. The best tip I found in terms of finding mentors was in the book Unapologically Ambitious by Shelley Archambault. Uh, and that was to, you have a problem, find the person that would be best fit to give you an advice on that problem. Once you find the person, approach that person with one question. So you go, hey, I have this problem. I feel like based on what you've done in the past, you could help me, um, you could support me in finding this. Uh, could you answer this question for me? You give the question. It's easy enough to answer one question. You don't have to jump on a call. You don't have to have half an hour planned every week. People are more likely to say, hey, yes, okay, I'm going to answer your question. Once they've answered the question, you go and then you implement, you try out what they said. And then once you've done that, you go back to them. Hey, thank you so much for your advice. I tried this. This is what happened. Um, do you have any feedback on that? Do you feel like there is anything I could have done better? And then you can ask another question as well. And this is how you can get someone to become 
your mentor by just asking one question. So this was an advice that I felt was quite helpful and I've tried it out, it did work. Second one is advocate within the company. Uh, sometimes your advocate could be the, it's a funny thing because you can't go to someone and be, hey, are you, are you, um, are you praising me when I'm not in the room? Are you talking about me when I'm not in the room? Are you, um, it, it's very difficult. And it took me a while to find out who my advocates were in the organization. And I found that through other people. So I found out through someone saying, um, this person says that of you. And I was thinking, oh, okay. Uh, so then I, managed, I tried to get closer to that person to try to see what they were saying and try to work more with them. Um, one advocate that I have, which I never thought I would have was someone who actually criticized my work. Uh, I remember being in a meeting, uh, being very invisible as I was. Uh, I was. It was an online meeting way before COVID. Um, and then there was this woman who was saying that she did not feel comfortable taking an analyst in meetings with her. Now she was working on the grocery segment at the time I was working in the grocery on the grocery segment. And what she meant was, I don't feel comfortable taking Karen in meetings with me because she cannot talk about analytics to clients. She is too shy. Um, that was very difficult to take, uh, but it was feedback. And what happened is I went to this person. So that was on a Thursday, I remember. I went to her on the Monday after having cried half of the weekend because I can't do my job apparently. Um, and I said, hey, I was in this meeting. You said that you should have seen her face. That was priceless because she realized I was on the meeting. She didn't know. Uh, and I asked, why did you say that? And then she told me why. And then from that moment, we worked towards how can I be better? How can I speak more in meetings? How can I translate my analysis into something that clients will understand? And from that point, she's been my biggest guest um, advocate at Carlytics and that's been lasting for four years so sometimes some people you wouldn't think would be your advocate can definitely become your advocate if you show that you want to do great things and you're motivated for it and you can actually do it and the last one is get closer to decision makers if you want to get promoted if you want to get promoted the people who are going to make the decision are the one you want to get close to. This is very important. And the last thing I have to say is if there are any managers out there, <laughs> it is your responsibility to support your direct reports in increasing their visibility. Um, it is really hard. It's a very hard thing to do. So there are a lot of managers who go, oh, yes, but she doesn't talk that much. She's just shy. And that's it. And they're not going to put you forward to promotion. They're not going to help you increase your visibility. They're just going to put it on the she is shy, not going to happen. She can't do it or he can't do it or they can't do it. Um, so I'm not going to do anything about it. It's on them. I disagree. It's on managers to support their direct report. It is their job. Um, that's it for the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will stop sharing so we can. Thanks, Karen. That was great. You're welcome. <laughs>